So the other day I received this email from Big Solar Cop and they're saying their share offers have reopened. This is a co-op that is trying to build solar on top of businesses, on top of buildings. And that makes quite a lot of sense because of course you got a critical mass if you're looking at top of all kinds of buildings that you may find in the UK, such as, you know, anywhere from a care home to a factory to a school. So what is this about and should I invest is the question today. Should I put some money behind this big solar cop? There are alternatives. Ripple is a classic that helps you reduce your bill as if you had this windmill or as if you had this solar panel. But that's for another uh, video. That's for another debate. That's for another day. Today, this is all about big solar co-op and what is this offer that they have. Let me know in the comments below if you've considered big solar co-op and whether you're going to be investing or whether you're looking at other options. Of course, I'm very interested. You can see here, this is an amateur dabbler view of the world. So very keen to hear comments. First things first, they've already got 840,000 pounds. They started in 2022, they were incorporated. And therefore, uh, this is quite a recent venture or recent uh, organization. If they've got this pipeline of sites, they've submitted 558. They're about to start two or three. It's, it's volunteer based. I think that's quite interesting. They are trying to leverage people that have some experience, either lawyers for doing some kind of contracting or uh, people that know something about finance, uh, maybe salespeople that reach out, try to find sites. That's how I understand based on the videos I've seen so far. To be clear, I'm trying to judge it just on the merits of what's presented to us today and whether that's good enough to justify putting some money in this. So let's go ahead and have a look at the website where uh, there is the offer. They are proposing to be an investor member, which means that they will provide a steady return of a target of 5% or 2% above base rate if higher. Okay, fine. Um, good. I mean, one way to look at the 5%, of course, is if you put £100 now, it would take at least 20 years to break even. And also you will see later that they don't offer really any interest or any dividends in the first two years or they will be much smaller so that's not going to be for everyone from that perspective this is an opportunity to be an investor in solar right so if you want to accelerate solar i think that that's a quite interesting approach they've already raised money as we've seen but let's take a look at their uh, document quite a few pages so we're going to try to go through this at page it's a fully uh, it, it's a classic cooperative. It's a hundred percent. It seems to be fully declared as such. The offer that just opened was on 14th of March and uh, they'll tell us until when. I think it's quite interesting that they've already raised that much money, 840,000. That's not huge, but that's not small either, right? So I think good efforts. We can invest between 100 and 100,000. Well, going to be more on the left hand side and right hand side I can sense uh, uh, from our perspective but uh, but fair enough right so that that's quite a, a lot of leeway in there the vision I think the vision is very good um, it is this idea that of course there should be solar on every roof in the UK and I think it meets one particular challenge or or criticism uh, that I've heard in other circumstances, which is, yep, great, you could invest in Ripple in a solar park, but you might be actually building a solar park on top of something that should have been restored to nature. So that's very interesting that it is saying, look, there's loads of places where you should be using the solar already because they're self-facing. And even though they're in the UK, they're just good enough. Right. So I think that that particular idea is very strong, very good as a as a basic starting point. Um, they've got big ambitions. So they want to try to ramp up. We'll take a look at the spreadsheet, you know, the classic hockey stick spreadsheet um, that looks 
pretty good of course but when you're starting you know all the spreadsheets are going to be looking like that so the structures have got the volunteer members and that's super interesting because these are those members of the public with skills and time to contribute to join and then investors that's what they are offering for you to be uh, in the context of investing in shares all right um, so what else well presentation of a few people again i don't think it means too much uh, for us it's not like uh, there's uh, elon musk on this picture i think these are just uh, people who uh, would know what they're doing right so share energy is uh, this thing that seems to have been spinning off uh, this particular cop think for a second <laughs> the power that would be if you put any of the big brands in oil and you use that concept and you scale it up within two or three years that would be pretty amazing um, now it might not achieve at all the same kind of outcome but it would be a different case right we are talking over a cooperative here and it does feel like that so now this is interesting again our solar model works best for sites which have a tennis court size available rooftop space at least 50 percent of the energy we generate can be used on site now that that is really strong as a concept you know they're looking for minimum scale to make sure that uh, you, you get value for money and you you don't waste your time having those multitudes of projects um, but equally this whole principle of of using the electricity on sites so that that's this notion that you know you you are reducing i assume also the losses of transmission and you've got local consumption uh, which is a really interesting uh, concept that makes an awful lot of sense and, and there we go with the the types of sites industrial health educational community so quite a lot variety in there and uh, as a rule a sump their electricity bills are more than a thousand pound per month so they're really helping directly the businesses and the public offices so that's good now let's look at the first installations i think again starting in spring 2023 two sites in the midlands 300 kilowatt peak so if you think of you know if you had been doing it on one house you'd be looking at four maybe six kilowatt peak so you can see this is already a completely different scale right we're talking 50 times probably a bit more you're using a lot more firepower here you're much more efficient if you negotiate one site like this a multi-roof installed on a food processing plant um, again makes an awful lot of sense to to me Ed and court medical practice in birmingham it's just 30 kilowatt peak but again, that's still a good five houses in a street. So you can see, again, in terms of scale and efficiency for the ramp up is going to be a lot better. Now, one thing that they do mention, and I think is, is very interesting and important, you know, people might think, yeah, well, solar is solar. You know, it's a lot better than burning oil. And that's probably true. But equally here, this notion that not all solar panels are made equal and they need to be ethically sourced and they might as well spend a bit more money but they're buying some good robust german panels that they know are going to be technically viable high efficiencies 25 year warranties and um, and importantly uh, ethically uh, sourced and of course uh, also minimizing the the travel sounds very good from that perspective that's a good page now the share offer is is very simple really uh we've said is the second share offer they aim to pay interest at five percent okay we've seen that a few times we know the limits now these are one pound shares there's not much more to it yeah the financial projections however are very interesting let's take a look at the financial model so what does it say they want to get to a hundred megawatt peak by 2030 what they look at in terms of generation megawatt hours again makes quite a bit of sense you know it's this one uh, kilowatt peak typically gives you one megawatt 
hours per year, maybe a bit less than that. So this is substantially less than that, as far as I can see. The main reason is probably, of course, that they're looking at the previous year. So 77 gives you your 77, 50, 53, 28, 32, and so on, right? So it's kind of the midpoint. You need to look at the midpoint here to understand how much is generated in the year right now for the capital so 840 which again we said was probably not a bad start they are looking to essentially get about the same this year a bit more and then ramping up substantially in terms of revenues having generated 77 gigawatt hours in the year they are looking to get about 13 or 14 million for that so that's a 14 into the 77 or maybe let's say 60. So they're looking at something like 25p per uh, kilowatt hours, which again sounds pretty sensible to me over here. Now, interesting that they, and they did mention that somewhere in the dock, they've got something about risk adjustment. That's the loss of some of the sites and so on and so forth. So that's good that they're looking at that. Right, so what about their surplus? Well, assuming all the numbers do add up. So what this is saying, well, that indeed there is definitely not really much interest to give in the first few years. So that makes complete sense. Um, but also that eventually, you know, these, these things ramp up quite a bit, okay? So look, this is really rough, but at least there is nothing completely uh, outrageous, far from it on this spreadsheet. In fact, all of that sounds sensible. It would take quite a bit more time to look at this more in the details, but it's good to see that, uh, you know, people seem to, to know uh, about how to look at these financial models, especially if they are going to be negotiating with uh, individual sites. Uh, you can feel that there is probably quite a bit of competencies behind that. So, so that's great. What are the risks? Okay, so these are the kind of things we need to be reading. Yeah, so projections are based on estimates. Okay, fair enough, but um, that is fairly robust normally year on year. It might vary a bit, but over such a long time frame, that shouldn't be a problem. The side problems, they've made provision, and that I think we've seen in the spreadsheet already, and that is very good. Right, so that's the reduced income by 20% from the fifth year. Well, that's what we've seen over here. Um, where was it? Risk adjustment over here, and that's the 20%. Yeah, so yeah, it's in there, makes good sense. Export electricity price, um, they've fallen from historic highs but remain high compared to pre energy crisis level. Um, again, we, we did that kind of real quick check. You have to believe that it's unlikely that the prices are going to go much down. Now, there's quite likely going to be a lot of supply of that renewable type of energy, which is much more constant in its price. So that, that's certainly um, a possibility, but it seems that they've baked that reasonably well already. Reliability, now if it's solar, frankly, the, the main challenge you're going to get is probably those uh, inverters that need to be changing at some point. So one of the questions is whether um, they've got, yes, the monitoring, preventive maintenance, insurance against loss of income, but also where are the replacement costs in all of this? Probably in the operating costs. At this stage, I wanted to check something, which is the schedule of investment in the solar panels. This is going to be the bulk of the spend. So you will expect to see in the capital outlay some numbers that match reasonably well uh, with this schedule of progression, right? So we've just done a, a little check over here, just reproducing those numbers in cumulative kilowatt peak. Um, that means how much more on the incremental is installed per year. Now, if you consider that for simplicity, you know, you're going to spend one pound per watt peak. Really, you can copy paste those numbers. And this is how much you're going to be spending in 
thousand pounds so these are our k right so this is a one million two million pounds three million pounds and so on and so forth and that means a total of 28 million pounds spent by 2027 if you consider the capital outlay which is in their spreadsheet over here it's actually not far from that it adds up to 23609 with a schedule which is broadly similar i mean there are some differences and um, the other thing is, of course, the capital outlay is not going to be just um, the uh, the panels themselves. I mean, you would expect to see some outlay for any repairs. But again, in the early years, you wouldn't see too much of that going on. So again, I think just a, a really rough quick check over here, but one that gives us confidence somehow uh, that the numbers we are looking at are making uh, some good sense, right? Uh, which is which is really what we are trying to do here. We're just trying to get a sense of should we be confident in what we're being presented because the information, there's going to be limited information available to us. Okay, so now equipment reliability, I think we're saying that they have added some replacement costs. Um, again, this is the kind of stuff we, we would need to, to look at more in the details for instance over here uh, i don't see that much replacement i would expect after eight years eight ten years there are those uh, uh, inverters that need changing uh, so i would want to see some of that rather than just 140 uh, incremental the capital outlay being 120 again i'm not sure there's huge amount for replacement costs over here that's uh, my slight uh, worry because it seems that we are still being driving we are still driving that number from that number i think the ratio over here looks pretty similar um, but again just rough rough uh, checking right so operational cost higher cost for service admin insurance and rates would reduce performance uh, we have tied in five year service contracts okay okay now society again of course good to see financial conduct authority incorporated in january 2022 we're definitely investing in something that's very new what this doesn't say is um, what happens if uh, if things go wrong and people just don't want to take this forward to what extent um, there is a form of continuity in the service provided and that service being the return on investment okay so that's uh, that's one of the questions. Now, final piece over here. Um, I don't think uh, adds too much more in terms of what I'm looking at over here. Um, the final point, I think there is an interesting point, which is one of uh, pure technicality, which is that they are indicating how, yes, these are shares of one pound, but actually just any payment with a credit card or debit card seems to be costing them money and therefore uh, they're trying to be efficient and avoid a 1.4% loss in the actual investment that is made because that's money that they pay to the bank. I think we've seen most of that by now. There's a right to vote at the uh, formal meetings. That's good. And also, I think it's quite interesting that investor members are collectively limited to, to 25%. I think here we've talked quite a bit about numbers, but if anything, the conclusion on these things is you're taking a leap of faith because you believe that you're investing in the right thing, in something that maybe is much more difficult to invest in otherwise. So I think that is, um, that is the conclusion, right? Which is... Um, on face of it, there's only so limited information. It is a new um, undertaking, if you will. It's a new, it's not a startup, obviously, but it's a new co-op. And therefore, I think the question is whether, one, you're willing to use that money instead of using it for something else, which is classic uh, question on investment, I guess. But importantly, this is not just like you putting your solar panels on top of your roof this is more about having a stake in something that hopefully will matter and whether you believe in the approach they are taking so i would say in summary i think their approach sounds 
extremely strong and very interesting and absolutely right. Um, whether the financials are strong, well, you could say in general, you know, solar makes good sense. It provides stability. So there should be that kind of need for companies uh, to use the rate. So I'm not too worried about that piece. I think for me, there's a question mark as to how long is this uh, going to last and um, and whether you're taking a bit of a punt and you don't know what to expect. And I think that's my final conclusion, which is uh, on that basis, I'm actually quite tempted to put a bit of money in. But of course, I almost consider it as if it was a donation, kind of a gift aided donation type thing, or in fact, startup type investment, except you don't get all the tax credits. And that's the final point, which is, don't we need a lot more of those government incentives for people to make the right choices when it comes to investment? There is risk in all of this. Um, yes, it will probably work out, but who knows? And therefore, the money that will be invested on this instance, I think it's money that you have to be happy to see go, frankly. Uh, you, this is money that you, you can't need. I think it's quite different if you were to put some solar panels on your roof because you're more likely to know what's going on to those solar panels. And maybe you'll sell your house and all of that, but the reality is uh, you have a bit more control. I'm very glad if I can invest and participate, but question mark as to what extent each and every one can actually put in this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.